Hi guys, so today I'm going to be doing a book review video of six books, and two of the books weren't that exciting, and then the one is sort of like an educational type of book. So let me get started with the educational type of book. Now, I have a lot of house plants in my house. Some are my mom's, some are mine, and this is by Better Homes and Gardens. It's the new house plant book, and I think I did a book review a long time ago on this on the another book that they made and this one it looks like this and it's basically a book about house plants it goes in alphabetical order it to it it tells you um their scientific name and then it tells you you know like what kind of temperature they like how much water to give them um like comments are like how you can like start another plant from that same plant but the one thing that i didn't like about this book is is some of the house plants in here i do not technically would consider house plants like there's some that are like the spring flowers you know like the tulips and the crocuses and the hyacinths those ones i don't consider to be house plants at all because obviously like you're not going to grow them inside you're going to grow them outside and cactus cactus i want to consider a house plant either just because of the fact that i think cacti in general are their own specific group but other than that it was a really good book um i don't know where i got this book from but i don't even know what happened but it's like crinkly the pages are crinkly so i guess i got it wet or whoever owned this book before got them wet and it does show you like pictures of each plant and there's like a little caption so you know which one goes with which plant like here's like the bamboo palm plant and it's the pictures are really nice in it so they're not like really distorted so you can actually see what the plants look like and some of them they tell you right off the bat like after it flowers or something it's not gonna flower anymore or it's a hard plant to try or something like that but there are some plants in here that I don't think they have in there like there's some plants that I have that weren't in this book unless it was just like because sometimes like it'll say a name of a plant but then there'll be like different names underneath it so that you kind of know what they are in case you have a different named plant so this one is the last book that i read and this is called lincoln's assassin it's the unsolicited ta the unsolicited confessions of john of wilkes booth it's by jf pennington this is what it looks like and this book was weird i got this at ollie's um i got these at, i found it at ollie's and i got it for christmas and it's basically about, um, it's 30 years after the assassination of President Lincoln. And John Wilkes Booth is going back to Illinois. He's, um, living, like, in, like, a rugged area with some of his, like, accomplices. And he has to go back because his girlfriend he had at the time had children with him. And she's dying or something, or she's sick. And he has to go back. And this book is really just really stupid in my opinion. Because I don't know if I showed you guys the book. This is what it looks like. Um, it's a weird book because when you start reading it, you read it like a normal book. And then it starts getting into like this play format. You know, like an actual play. And the chapters are in acts. So it's like act one through four there's only four acts and they all have five scenes in them and it's just weird like it reads like a regular book and then it just all all ugh. then it just all of a sudden goes into like play format which i don't really like in a book and it's like it's like the author couldn't make up his mind it's like do you want it to be a play or do you want it to be norm a normal book because i understand like i know that john wilkes booth was like an actor and it's basically just, like, it goes back and forth between, like, I think, present and before he tried to do what he did to Lincoln. And it's just a weird book. It's all over the place. Like, and I, so far, I'm on, like, I was on the last scenes in this book, and he never went back, at least I don't think so, to his children at all. Like, I just, and then it's, like, and then it's hard to represent, like, when they get to the play part, it's not, like, John Wilkes Booth or anything like that. It's, like, an actor and then a young woman or 
a friend or something like that. Like, it's never, like, specifically who these people are when they go into play format. So, it's, like, so, it's, like, so I'm trying to think, like, is the actor John Wilkes Booth or is John Wilkes Booth playing the actor? I don't know. And is the young woman... Well, the young woman, I think, is Ella. That's the woman who had his children. But it's just a weird book. And I, I just didn't like it. I thought I would like it. But... It just wasn't good. It was, like, all over the place. And, like, I, like, it goes from, like, past to present, but there's never, like, a dis, like, there's a disconnect between, like, like, sometimes it has the dates of what, like, the dates of what the past or the present, but other times it doesn't, so you just have to guess. Like, sometimes he'll, like, start talking about this person that thinks, knows him. And it basically is about, um, the other thing about it is, is John Wilkes Booth, it's, there's like a conspiracy, I don't know, in this book where, well, I don't know if it actually happened, but it's this thing where, um, John Wilkes Booth really didn't die that day, it was actually somebody else portraying him, so he actually is still alive. So I'm thinking, well, when he goes on these trips, somebody has to know that this person is him. You know what I mean? Like, it's just really weird. And how, like, the one person did know him, but they never did anything about it. Unless it, that was part of, like, the past. I don't know. Because, like I said, it goes back and forth. And then it's like he'll see somebody he knew, he knew from back in the past. And then he'll go into, like, a detailed description or, like, a thing about him. And there's not a lot of dialogue in this book. Either, like, the other book I'm going to show you. And I just did not like it. So the next book I'm going to show you is another book that I didn't like. And this is Oprah from Oprah's Book Club. So you would think that it would be a good book, but oh my gosh, it wasn't. It was horrible. It was like the worst book I read in a very long time. And it took me forever to get through. And this is called Love in the Time of Cholera. It's by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. This is what it looks like, and it's basically, I guess, a book that, it takes place in, I think, Jamaica, and for some reason, when I was trying to read this book, it just seemed like it was in a different place, like, I just, when I thought of, like, the cholera thing or something, I just thought it was, like, an ancient time kind of book, like, during, like, the dark ages or something, like, when the plague was starting to go on, so I thought, oh, it's, like, in, like, the... 16 or 1500s or whatever in England or somewhere not in Jamaica because they never said they were in Jamaica until like halfway through the book or something and it's about this woman who she married this doctor and he died and at his funeral she's seen this man that she was childhood sweethearts with and it goes back and forth between like her life and his life and how they came connected and it talks about how, like, he thinks that he needs to be, like, this powerful person for her to like him and stuff now. And, like, and then he was having, like, affairs with all these people in the book um, that didn't mean anything to him. Because um, he really, like, he told people, like, I don't really like you. I just like this one woman. <laughs> and stuff like that. And this guy, he had cholera. The guy that she liked or something. And he had it for a long time. And he actually, there were some, like, instances in the book where he actually did come in contact with this doctor. Because it starts out with the doctor's death. But then it goes back to, like, when she, like, it kind of goes like this. Like, the doctor da dies. And then it, the next chapter, it goes into the woman's life. And then the next chapter is about his life to a certain point. And then it's the doctor's life to a certain point. And then it's the woman and the doctor's life together and then his it's just a complicated book I really just didn't like it and there was absolutely little dialogue now I like books that have dialogue in it because I feel like the book goes by faster and there was this one significant part in the book where it was just like this author like just describe just like to describe things like he would spend like five or six pages describing things and then have like one line of dialogue and that was it and then go into the next scene doing the same thing and it was just horrible. Like, this one scene, it was, like, an epic moment with the doctor and the woman. And he just detailed it. Like, he didn't go in. Like, with that kind of moment, it should be more about 
like the conflict and the dialogue more so than just describing what happened. Because I feel like when you don't have dialogue in the book, it's not really helping the scene out at all, at least my opinion. So that book was just really, really, really bad. And it's a, I didn't even realize it. It's like a made into a movie. I could just see in the back of the book right now and it just says now a major picture, which I don't know why because that book was bad. This one I got um, from Ollie's from for Christmas and it's called The Shepherd's View. It's Modern Photographs from an Ancient Landscape by James Rebanks. And this book is a quick read to get through. You wouldn't think it because of how like thick the book is, but most of them, um, most of the pages are basically like pictures of sheep and I really like sheep it's like one of my favorite animals so this is about this man James Rebank who works on this who has this farm and he lives on this island that's a little way away from Maine England like like Maine England like London and everything and he's trying to get back to the way like, the pastoral things are going, like, not high technology, stuff like that, and he talks about, like, um, taking your sheep to sheep shows, and his experiences with his sheep on his farm, and his father's farm, and stuff like that, and it was a really good book, I really liked it, it's kind of like a calming kind of book, because it's not like there's no drama in it, there's not, there's like, uh, like, a couple of the stories he tells are funny in it, but it's like a calm book, like you just like snuggle up and read this book and it just makes you feel relaxed, kind of. And this is, I don't know if I showed you guys, this is what it looks like. I always forget if I show you guys the book or not. So this one was a small little book. It only took me a day to read. It was only 176 pages. This is called Paying the Piper. It's by Sharon McCrum. This is what it looks like. And this book was really good. It was about these, these, um, it's, it was about this, um, anthropologist who is going to this dig in Scotland on one of these islands and they take these like a doctor um, an archaeologist and somebody else and they go on this island and they all start getting sick and the woman is scared because it's they're all getting sick and then they're dying so here at the end of the book, they find out what's going on, and it takes place, it's about something happened during World War II, I think, and it was a good book, and I just thought, oh, like, these people, they're all just gonna die on this island, and whatever, but it was a really good book, only two of the people survived what was going on, and it was like, a, it was a shocking end, like, it, like, of what happened, and this one person wasn't who they said they were. It was kind of like a survivor kind of moment. If you like like that kind of like book kind of thing. So this one, I didn't realize when I got it that this book was the sixth book in the series. Um, this is about, it's called The Sisters Grimm, Tales from the Hood. It's by Michael Buckley. This is sort of like a young adult kind of book I would say not for like adults but this is what it looks like because there's like some some like pages have pictures on them to describe what's going on um the sisters are related to the original brothers Grimm and they live in this world um where there's ever afters which are like all the fairy tale characters there's um Wizard of Oz characters and, and all that like and fairy fairy tale characters, Disney kind of fairy tale characters, all that kind of stuff. And they want to help out this, not, I mean, they want to help out the wolf. And what happens is, is everybody, I guess, in this place has, like, an alternate personality. So it's like, you might, like, the wolf can be this human, but then at any time he could turn back into the big bad wolf. And they're trying to figure out, he's in jail, and he's on, he's, um, the Queen of Hearts and the Sheriff of Nottingham from Ride, from yeah, Ride Riding Hood, from Robin Hood and Alice in Wonderland are like the sheriff and the mayor of this town. Prince Charming used to be the mayor of the town, but something happened to him. So they want to free their friend because they don't think he did it because, um, like they're two separate things: the guy who's who is the wolf, and then the wolf itself. 
So they need the help of um, Red Riding Hood. And Red Riding Hood went insane. And they have to try to figure out how to use this magical thing to help um, show Red Riding Hood, um, to get Red Riding Hood back to her normal self so she could help the wolf out. And it's a good book. And, I mean, it's really complicated to, like, really talk about just because of the fact that it goes into details about stuff that happened in the previous books that I didn't realize that this was in a series of books. But it was a really good book. Um, it's really, I just like it. And then, like, there's these funny moments where the scarecrow from The Wizard of Oz is the librarian to this library, but he's also clumsy still. It's funny. I really liked it. So that was the books that I had for this book review video. I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.